three, two, one. Never has there been a better time to be alive in human history. If you're not feeling it, you must discover why. Join Matthew Bolton in developing and applying a framework of objective optimism toward a flourishing life of meaning, health, and happiness. Here's your host, Matthew Bolton. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Brightside. I'm Matthew Bolton. Now, today's subject could be a huge one, but I'm not going to go all the way there. I mean, it could be a book even, but I'm just going to keep it simple, small. And I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, I'm just going to begin at the beginning. I'm going to put out my little story of how it played out for me the other day, the choice I made and what I learned from it. And it wasn't really that I learned so much as I was reminded of something, as I think it's something that most of us know or recognize on some level. In any case, my little scenario I'm going to put out will be like a micro example of this bigger issue. And I think what we can take from it, including some actionable advice, is something that's already changing the game for me and I hope can change the game for you. On a morning a couple weeks ago, I was up early to work on some notes for the show I did just a couple episodes ago about Christmas. And I had said to myself the night before that I would work on it first thing, knowing that completing those show notes was what I wanted and knowing that I would enjoy myself if I did. And I know this through experience, like in the period last year that I've described elsewhere, when I would get up uh, in the early morning and open a work folder before viewing any email or Facebook or any kind of rabbit hole or anything that opened my mind to something outside of my work. Um, The idea was that for the first 30 minutes each morning, I would be in my work. And it was awesome. Um, You know, the hardest part of doing work is to get started, especially when it's work that you know you want to do or you have to get done. I mean, it's, it's awesome when you get that stuff done. So as I did this, often in the situation, those 30 minutes would turn into a whole morning session as I was so addicted to solving the problems of the writing or whatever it happened to be. Um, And I would describe this as an invigorating and contented state, what some people might call flow. And I might even describe it as something close to cheerful if I had time to be aware of it. But that's the thing, when you're working on a task or problem you want or have to do, you get into a kind of groove and it's enjoyable, kind of as if, as if there's nowhere you'd rather be. Now that 30 minutes thing is not just a trick to make you do more than 30. I said that it's a way to get you started and then you end up doing more work. No, that would deter the mind if I knew that I had to do more than 30 and would defeat the purpose of it. It is true that if I wasn't getting very far, I could stop after 30 minutes and that would be enough. Like, you know, I, I, I hacked through the problem, I got something organized and at least got the project started and the problem out there to be tackled later. And that is good enough. Um, I just added that once you, you know, it's usually that once you get the problem started and opened up, even though your 30 minutes is up, you are free to, and now I'm free to watch or read or do anything that I like, you don't really want to do anything else. So anyway, that's what I did during that period. And it was the foundational choice of that first 30 minutes thing that kickstarted a swell in productivity and happiness in my life during that period. And it's why I knew I wanted to make it happen again this recent morning that I'm telling you about now. So with all that, I had said I would work on these podcast show notes first thing. But as I hadn't been into the habit of this in a long while, as you get to that morning with lots of time ahead of me, there was a video on YouTube that I saw. Now, why was I on YouTube? Well, I had to uh, publish or not publish, but I, it's already it self publishes, but I wanted to post uh, my latest Mr. Brightside podcast episode on Facebook and LinkedIn on the social media. So I went to YouTube to get the link so I could share it. So, uh, but that kind of thing is nothing that would get me into any kind of rabbit hole. It's not a threat to me. Um, it was just post it and then open up your folder. So it's still first thing effectively, but YouTube was up there and I saw the title of one of the videos and I thought, man, that looks like a really fun video to watch. And I almost watched it. Um, I'm on winter holiday now from the university semester and I have all morning um, and the first part of the afternoon to do this work. So it's nothing for me to take 20 minutes. You know, I could just say, well, look for my first coffee. I'll just sit with 20 minutes, have my first coffee, watch this video, do something. And my second coffee, I'll open my folder and work. But Instead, I overpowered that urge with the conviction that opening my notes would make me happier, and I went ahead with my plan. So, of course, I got lost in the project, and as I got up for my first uh, bathroom break, I'm drinking coffee, remember, 
I was just so excited. I, I felt so great. And, and it's then that I thought, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast, just describe what I've described to you right now. And it was more than just being proud or pleased of my choice or even happy because my work was getting done. Yeah, it was all of those things. But it was that all of a sudden, I was looking forward to my classes later that afternoon, to my day in general, and then to my evening uh, where my wife and I would probably watch a Christmas movie or something. But here's the contrast. As I said, I'm freshly into my winter holiday off the university semester. So with my schedule, this still leaves private lessons in my home on weekdays, starting the mid to late afternoons and into the evening. So for many of these first days of the uh, university winter holiday, I've been pulling a George Costanza on the Summer of George episode. If you're not familiar with that, um, George gets a, a three month paid holiday bonanza out of somewhere. I think, I don't know, maybe a severance pay or something like that. And he just thinks, I'm going to really do something with this time, Jerry. I'm going to, you know, and he makes all these plans and he gets up and says, I declare this the Summer of George. And, you know, of course it's a disaster. But, um, at the beginning of the first thing, he ends up like one of the first things he does is buy a lazy boy. He's in his jogging pants. He's eating blocks of cheese or, and all this. And he's just kind of hanging around. And Jerry's asking him, so what about these plans and blah, blah, blah. And George is like, I'm just taking a few days to decompress, as he says it. And anyway, this is what it was kind of like for me. Like I, I get up in the morning and the whole morning is just there for me to watch what I want to watch, read what I want, have my coffee. Maybe I'll sit down with my wife and talk to her for one of my coffees. I'm just soaking in the Christmas mood. I'm being lazy, etc. I can either get ahead on my work or not, as there are several hours ahead of me before scheduled classes start in the afternoon. And on top, there's always the next day to a point. And it's on these days that I'm enjoying so much in the morning. I'm also looking forward to the evenings after classes where I can watch Christmas movies with my wife or have a drink and some nice food, just a nice holiday evening. It's like an ongoing extravaganza and it's so great. It's what the holidays are all about, right? But here's the problem. Often when that evening rolls around, you know, the students are all gone. Yay. All right, let's go. I don't enjoy it to the level that I might have given the promise of it, right? There is some anxiety associated with it, something left undone and something not quite celebratory and fun about it. I was loving the morning feeling that part felt great. The holiday coffee in the morning. I've, you know, I'll do my work later, whenever I got lots of time, but it caught up with me by the evening. Now, what caught up with me is the question. Well, I knew it more or less. And knowing that answer is what motivated me to stick with that morning plan this recent time a couple of weeks ago. And this is what I meant uh, when I said that I hadn't been in the habit of straight to the work folder and why the 20 minutes for one coffee before starting, you know, would be nothing, etc. It's easy to tell myself that story and believe it. Well, luckily, I didn't believe it. And I rejected that YouTube video and I opened up my work folder. And so what happened then? Well, I already told you that I felt great, etc. But what as far as what I got done, I went the distance and organized the notes to my satisfaction. And I was even able to go on with the momentum and record the whole show that day. So my show is uh, published on Monday mornings here in Korea. It's Sunday evenings for my North American listeners, which is most of you. And you can imagine the difference between being done a, a Monday show on a Monday or Tuesday, almost a whole week before publishing versus still having it to do on Thursday or even Saturday. Now, it's still possible for me to enjoy a Tuesday night knowing that I've got time to do it on either of those days later if I really block and plan it and all that, but it's not quite the same thing. And that's just it. Like I said, how much I was looking forward to my whole day, including the work as well as the play, like even my classes and everything I was looking forward to. But I was really looking forward to that evening with my wife on top. I knew that I would enjoy it so much as I, it would feel like a reward for an achievement. I did the thing that I wanted. And so I was where I wanted to be. Like there'd be nothing pulling at me or left undone when I watched my movie or whatever I chose to do. There'd be no supposed tos or shoulds playing in my subconscious. It would be a celebration, not just an escape or a putting off of the work. And in all this feeling and this excitement that I had um, and, and how I felt so good, I immediately thought of a couple scenes and quotes from Atlas Shrugged, which is one of my favorite novels uh, by Ayn Rand. And please allow me to share them here. Uh, Dagny Taggart is one of the main protagonists in the novel. And in this flashback scene, she's recently had 
uh, just had her first debut ball uh, that her mother had planned. So it's set in the past time. And this is when a girl would have a debut. So her mother planned a big ball for her, this beautiful event uh, that she was really surprised that Dagny had accepted and wanted to have because um, the young Dagny in this in the story is kind of a tomboy character who just thinks about how she's going to run the, the railroad uh, one day, her family business, which of course she does. She becomes the you know, the vice president in charge of uh, operations or something. She basically runs the railroad effectively. So her mom is uh, quite pleased that she wants to have such a thing. She's surprised when she's so beautiful in her dress. And she's like, of course, mom, why would you think I didn't like these things? But anyway, she goes to this thing, but at the end of it, she's sitting there um, quite dejected, looking a little disappointed by the whole thing. And her mother is, you know, a little worried about this and approaches her and asks her about it. And the quote, uh, you know, the scene continues like this. And here we go. Dagny says, quote, Mother, do they think it's exactly in reverse, she asked. What, asked Mrs. Taggart, bewildered. The things you were talking about, the lights and the flowers, do they expect those things to make them romantic, not the other way around? Darling, what do you mean? There wasn't a person there who enjoyed it, she said, her voice lifeless, or who thought anything at all. They moved about, and they said the same dull things they say anywhere. I suppose they thought the lights would make it brilliant. Darling, you take everything too seriously. One is not supposed to be intellectual at a ball. One is simply supposed to be gay. How? By being stupid? I mean, for instance, didn't you enjoy meeting the young men? What men? There wasn't a man there I couldn't squash 10 of. And then she goes on to a little bit more, but uh, hey guys, there's a portrayal of a strong woman who doesn't sell herself cheaply to men for you. And there's way more where that came from in this book. I'll tell you, if you're looking for stories featuring empowered women, it doesn't get much more hardcore than Dagny Taggart and Atlas Shrugged. But what's key in that exchange relevant to today's theme is the idea of the reversal of cause and effect, which I'll discuss a little bit uh, later. But first an accompanying quote, at a later party at another character's house, um, at the present time in the book, that ball scene had been a flashback, remember, she's observing the crowd and commenting to the host. Now, this uh, party that they're at is a very ritzy affair with celebrities, writers, journalists, big business people, etc., and all that. So she says to him, but do you think any of these people are enjoying it? They're just straining to be more senseless and aimless than usual, to be light and unimportant. You know, I think that only if one feels immensely important can one feel truly light. It's just a thought that disturbs me once in a while. I thought about it my first ball. I keep thinking that parties are intended to be celebrations and celebrations should be only for those who have something to celebrate. And that was the main quote that came to mind when I felt as I did uh, at my bathroom break, I said, feeling, looking ahead to my day and my evening, how much better it was going to be after having done my work. I thought, yeah, celebrations are for people who have something to celebrate. The big issue that I said could become a book today um, is that we need a productive purpose to earn self-esteem and be happy. But the simpler point today is that you need not do something grand. You need only take one step in the direction you want to go. And that's all you ever have to do. Happiness is not about hitting some high points after long and constant struggle, pain, and suffering. It's something that could be a constant and which is earned by achieving the little things every day. It's about doing something toward that bigger thing, which is connected to that bigger thing after that. And we can celebrate those little achievements with little celebrations, a movie with the wife or a nice dinner, an evening with friends, a quiet book or some other leisure activity, our weekends, whatever. Whatever the level, the pattern is achievement followed by the enjoyment of it. But it can't be the other way around. We cannot reverse cause and effect. Celebrations do not give meaning to our lives. Productive work does which means work that advances us closer to our goals, big or small. And then the leisure time we are afforded and the abundance we display, consume and enjoy, like the lights, the flowers, the luxury, the food, the drink, the music, the space we, you know, we have, et cetera. This is all given meaning as we celebrate ourselves and that the world might be so good if we shape it this way. And to another point, it is in doing the thinking and the work to shape ourselves and our lives in the image we want that one may then be simply light and gay at a party. To be serious about oneself does not mean that one doesn't have any fun. Indeed, some of the most intellectual people I know and know of are also able to not take themselves too seriously, as people say, or know how to make light of things. They appear lighter than most around them, in fact. It is those who are weighed down by the unresolved, the undone, and the unknown within themselves and their lives who can't have fun in a proper sense. 
I can be much lighter and gayer, enjoy my time more, be more free and carefree if I think more seriously and long range about my life and if I plan and execute regularly. But I don't want to get too heavy here. The simple point is that we have to feel accomplished. But I emphasize again that it doesn't have to be a grand achievement. It can be anything like cleaning or like working on my show notes. Take a small action towards something you know you really want to achieve. Now, I think it's important to get a sense of achievement, to make it a complete task in itself. So even if it's just part of a bigger whole. So, I mean, if it's like a big project, define a chunk of it that can be completed, completed on its own. And then when you complete that thing, see if your TV show or whatever little leisure time activity you have planned isn't more enjoyable. And that other thing that I said that we all know on some level is that having free time gets old quick. Many retired people know this. We've all felt it on weekends sometimes where Monday seems to roll around before we've had any fun with all of our time. We'd look forward to that Saturday and Sunday all week, and then we spend the whole time feeling antsy, somehow unable to enjoy it all. The main thing that I learned and the practicable, actionable lesson for today is that whenever I find that I can't enjoy my free time, it's a signal that I've exhausted my celebratory consumption credit on my previous accomplishments. And I know that I can remedy that by getting to work on something I know I want done in my life. Then whatever I do for leisure will be way more enjoyable. I'll be a person who has something to celebrate. So that's that for now, although I will add a final word in just a minute. But before I give you that, let me remind you to please ask questions and or make comments about this idea, any idea on any other show, or ask me about something you'd like to hear me discuss in the future. You may do this in the comments section where you're listening now, or you can go to the Mr. Brightside Facebook page, facebook.com slash matthewbolton.ca. Um, Please also share this uh, episode, share this episode here, share the show in general to anyone that you think would find value in it or uh, enjoy it in any way. And I very much appreciate all of that, guys. Thank you. Now, there's so much to say in all this, uh, but let me just finish with this. While many of our jobs do have built-in goals to be completed, and a lot of the time that's enough to make the weekend a real cashing in on genuine achievement, most of us today also do a lot less work than ever and have more free time and holiday time than humans before us. We now have the time to build many other things in our lives, including ourselves. We can plan projects to improve our homes, our bodies and health, our communities, our own minds, etc. And it's not that we have to or should do things that are grand, but it is true that at whatever pace, we must either go forward or backward. There is no standing still. To stagnate is to regress. And when we stand still for too long, it makes us anxious. As whether we are fully aware of it or not, we are starting to move backward or downward if you prefer. And planning another trip or party or TV series to watch won't quiet the anxiety or fill the hole that we have a hard time defining. Planning endless celebrations isn't enough, but you can enjoy such celebratory events as you have coming even more if you have something to celebrate. So go and give yourself something small to celebrate today and every day. I'll see you guys next time. Mr. Brightside, your time out to refresh, refuel, and refocus your mind and energy toward building an optimistic framework for flourishing. Life is good. It's up to you to choose the bright side. 